the rate at which we are consuming natural resources, we are leaving our children an environment that is in far worse shape than what we inherited from our parents. Glaciers and ice sheets are melting. Ten years from now, one horned rhinos may be extinct. Amazon is the world's largest rainforest and it's burning! It's difficult to breathe with the mask or without the mask. It's summer, but still I have to keep my umbrella handy. The greatest threat to the planet is the belief that someone else will save it. The world is Climate change is the most Herculean challenge of our times and its intense impact is being felt by people across the globe. As the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres pointed out, the climate emergency is a race we are all losing, but it is a race we can win. I'm Ritika Jhanji Jagtiani and a very warm welcome to Toshiba for a new day in association with Republic TV. In this show, we will discuss the long-term solutions and a plan of action to march towards a more sustainable future. Before we delve into this discussion, let me introduce my very esteemed panel for the show today, starting with Mr. Tomohiko Okada, Managing Director, Toshiba India Private Limited. I'm also being joined by Sri D.P. Mathuria, Executive Director, Technical National Mission for Clean Ganga, Dr. S. Janakarajan, former professor MIDS Chennai, currently president South Asia Consortium for Interdisciplinary Water Resources Studies. Mr. Rajat Kathuria, director and chief executive of ICRIAR and Mr. Sohinder Gill, director general, Society of Manufacturers of Electric Vehicles. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us for this very special show. Let me begin the show by asking you, Mr. Okada, that uh, how is a big corporate like Toshiba working towards the realization of a decarbonized society? At Toshiba, we have an unwavering drive to make and do things that lead to a better world. The world continues to face a big issue, climate change. And one thing we need to do is to invest in clean energy and decarbonization of the industrial sector. Toshiba recently announced Toshiba Group's Environmental Future Vision 2050 as a group-wide vision towards advancing environmental management. By halving greenhouse gas emissions throughout our value chain by 2030, compared to 2019, we will contribute to worldwide efforts to realize net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. We will achieve our goal by expanding investment in energy saving equipment and the use of renewable energy, leveraging our technologies to create products and services that contribute to greenhouse gas reductions and promoting business that involve climate change adaptation measures. India has partnered with global companies to work towards a sustainable environment. Toshiba is one such company and its partnership with India dates back to 1965. So Mr. Okada, I think it's just right to ask you that um, what do you have to say about this partnership that you've had through the years and also through a little bit of light on the Japan-India synergy? Toshiba's partnership with India is almost 60 years old. It began in 1965 with the delivery of hydroelectric equipment in Meghalaya. Equipment that all these years later are still running smoothly. Today, we position India as a manufacturing and export hub and have committed to industrial and technological investments. Our focus is on the critical B2B sector, including 
energy and social infrastructure solutions. I believe that Toshiba is India's natural partner in its pursuit of environmental sustainability and economic growth. Did you know 76% of Indians live in places that do not meet the national air quality standards? I think one option that everyone is looking up to to solve this, to combat this problem of air pollution is adopting electric vehicles. So at this point, let me bring you in, um, Mr. S. Janakarajan. Um, now, uh, we know that different state governments are coming up with measures to encourage people to buy more and more electric vehicles. But I would like to ask you that to what extent do you think that consumers switching to electric vehicles will actually help curb our country's air pollution problem. In the recent times, there have been a lot of efforts to really shift towards uh, you know, the uh, electric uh, vehicles, shifting from uh, the, uh, and the traditional conventional energy source of petrol and diesel. Uh, no problems. I think we should do that is really going to considerably reduce the vehicular population, no, no doubt about it. But I want to really caution you on one thing. Do you remember when the plastics were introduced, we were all very happy. Today, plastic has become a menace. Definitely, we should shift towards electronic vehicle, but at the same time, we should have plants without any, without, without waiting for it to accumulate. We should have a plants to scientifically dispose of the batteries and also the uh, uh, other uh, 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 materials that we will be using in the conversion of the uh, conventional uh, uh, oil vehicle to the um, uh, electrified vehicles. So air pollution is a huge problem for India. Our national capital is one of the most polluted cities in the world. And to tackle this problem is crucial for us. Let me once again go back to Mr. Okada. Mr. Okada, how is Toshiba combating air pollution through its innovative technologies. Toshiba is conscious of its responsibility towards sustainability. The main plank of our management philosophy is committed to people, committed to the future. Toshiba is taking various initiatives, both globally and in India, to contribute to sustainable growth. We offer complete end-to-end energy solutions and products with low carbon footprint. From power generation to transmission and distribution and storage. Solutions that contribute to cleaner power and help to curb air pollution. We are also addressing pollution from tailpipe emissions. Toshiba's rechargeable automotive battery, SCIB, is ideal for regenerative power systems where it contributes to improve fuel consumption efficiency and reduces CO2 emissions. We have established a joint venture to set up India's first automotive lithium-ion battery manufacturing factory in Gujarat. Actually, let me take this a little further and go across to Mr. Suhinder Gill, who is with us right now on the show. Mr. Gill, we can all buy electric vehicles, but the big question is that do we have adequate charging infrastructure for these vehicles throughout the country? And if not, then what more needs to be done? Yes, charging infrastructure, in what respect we have to discuss. Uh, for example, in India, uh, two-wheelers and three-wheelers, they have found their own solution to charging infrastructure. Personal cars, surely, you need charging infrastructure. But do you think India is ready for personal cars? And will anybody invest knowing that there are not enough volumes? So few things have to be taken from priority point of view. What are the low hanging fruits? What can be introduced with least resistance? And one of them is less dependence on charging infrastructure. Two wheelers have all portable batteries. E-rickshaws and e-autos have found their own solution of terminus battery swappings or terminus battery charging. And so also have buses. Even Ola World's taxis have found their terminuses to charge. So a nationwide or city-wide charging infrastructure, which is so capital intensive, perhaps is something down the line. And it should not be taken as a hindrance or an obstacle to electric mobility. And we should go by what is required in limited resources 
to go ahead and put charging points, for example, because it's a range anxiety only. Once in a while you require it. So if you have enough charging points in parking lots, metered charging points, that's good enough for anybody who's buying a two-wheeler or a three-wheeler or a taxi to take care of his needs of range anxiety. How do you think corporates like Toshiba and others, they can actually contribute towards realizing India's dream of adopting clean energy um, henceforth? Like I believe uh, companies like Toshiba and many other Indian companies are trying to do some links of the chain, but there are so many corporates and industry uh, bodies and policies that have to come together right from a source to the consumption to make our country cleaner from energy consumption point of view and energy utilization point of view. Electric mobility surely is one way of doing it, provided there is a clean energy at the back end because at least tailpipe emission is not there. And from that point of view, I believe, this is the first step to reduce at least urban pollution. And even if it is a dirty electricity right now, it is better controlled at the thermal power stations till the time we convert to clean energy at the back end. So corporates do really have a lot of role to play because every corporate should not think of just bottom line approach. They have something to do on the, uh, towards the society, towards the country also. So if both these things are together, they're thinking about taking care of environment and taking care of the businesses. I believe corporates have an instrumental role to play in this. Air and water are resources essential for our survival. Corporates like Toshiba are ensuring that Indians are one with nature and live pollution-free. It's time for a short break in Toshiba for a new day in association with Republic TV. We'll be right back. Welcome back after the break to Toshiba for a new day in association with Republic TV. Now look at this statistic that over 80% of wastewater resulting from human activities is discharged into our rivers and sea without any pollution removal. Let me bring in Mr. Okada once again. Mr. Okada, if you could tell us about Toshiba Water Solutions and companies' long-term association with the Namami Gange Initiative. Toshiba Water Solutions a leading water and wastewater treatment company based in India has a proven track record of executing over 450 projects in 35 countries. The company provides a complete one-stop solution from engineering, procurement, construction to operation and maintenance. Its recent projects in Oman, Philippines, and Georgia are a testimony to Toshiba's expertise and capability in executing projects in foreign countries from an Indian base. Toshiba is committed to support Indian government's Clean Ganga Initiative and is involved in projects for the construction of nine sewage treatment plants in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and Jharkhand. Let me bring in Sri D.P. Mathuria at this point. Um, Mr. Mathuria, untreated sewage is a big problem. How is the Namami Gange initiative treating sewage effectively? As you know, Namami Gange program is aimed at uh, holistic improvement in the river water quality and, to, and is aimed to restore the wholesomeness of the river Ganga. All the initiatives, be it you know, municipal sewage treatment or industrial pollution abatement and other issues of solid waste management, they are being addressed and ultimately they have yielded in solid outcomes in form of improvement in river water quality, both in terms of you know, dissolved oxygen, which is, which is a parameter uh, towards the assimilative capacity of the river, health of the river, and biochemical oxygen demand, which is indicator of organic pollution. So, so the overall health of the river has improved because of the initiatives towards sewage management 
uh, under the Namami Ganga program. Let me bring in Dr. S. Janakarajan here. Um, you know, we can talk about using technology uh, for solving India's water pollution, but we need to create adequate water infrastructure to tackle this. Do we have this? And if not, then what more needs to be done in the long term? In India's water needs are on the rise. Our per capita availability of water has come down drastically in the last three, four decades. Okay, from something like you know, 8,000 cubic meters to something like 1,500 cubic meters. And it is going to go down again more and more due to the population rise. And we have been, our, our demand has been on the rise. Don't forget people are using water only for drinking and domestic use. There are a growing industrial water need. There's a growing uh, agricultural water need. And also you, you should remember that our food security is going to become a huge concern because of the lack of availability of water. Agriculture sector is the largest user of groundwater in the country today. But groundwater is sinking, dropping, depleting day by day. This is why I said you really have to have a rainfall accounting protocol. Because if there is going to be something like a thousand millimeters rainfall in a particular state, in a particular region, what does it mean? How many million cubic meters or how many thousand million cubic feet of water have we got due to this rainfall? Do you have any account? 80% is runoff because we are not in a position to save it. Because we are, run to, we are not in a position to recharge groundwater. So that is the situation. Now, please wake up. You please wake up, make sure that your rainfall, uh, your rainfall is accounted and your rainfall is saved and your rainfall is recharged. Let me bring in Mr. Rajat Kathuria at this point. So to deal with such long-term issues, how important is environmental research funding and how much more impetus needs to be given to that? Environment is extremely important uh, for countries like emerging markets like India. And the reason is because environmental damage has been caused, caused across various industries like agriculture. Uh, it's creating problems in urbanization. It's creating problems uh, for our mobility. And therefore, I think, uh, although it's a long-term issues, we need to start acting on it now because it's, it's going to take a long time uh, to be able to address it. And therefore, we need to address it in the local context, not in a global context, but in a local context. And to address it in a local context, we need to create local knowledge uh, so that we can address the problems that are arising within the country. For that, environmental funding is extremely critical and extremely important mm -hmm. so that we can provide the lever to the policymakers, both at the state level and national level, on what informed policy actions could be based on the modeling and based on the knowledge that we create, both at, as I said, at the state level and at the national level, and of course, at the level of individual sectors that are more polluting than others. Let me go across to Sri DP Mathuria. How near is a future where the water from Ganga will be actually fit for consumption? So far as Uttarakhand state is concerned, we have almost completed all our projects and they are functional. And the result is that the water is of class A category. Class is the best category in, under which water can be used uh, after, you know, primary disinfection for drinking purpose. And all along Ganga, the river water quality uh, is, is healthy, as I've said. And uh, largely in, you know, Uttar Pradesh stretch of Ganga, uh, the water is of class B category, which again is, you know, fit for bathing purposes. So, uh, so the results, as, as I've said, are showing and uh, the, 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 the quality of the water will be fit for uh, bathing purpose for which, and that is the aim of this program. So, so in very near future, uh, when all these projects will come up, the pollution ingress will be stopped and the river water quality will be, uh, will be approachable when it concerns the bathing standards. The government's Make in India initiative has created new jobs, attracted foreign investment and is transforming India into a manufacturing hub and companies like Toshiba are working with the government to realize this goal. Let me go to Tomohiko Okada who is with us on the show. Uh, so could you please tell us a little bit more about Toshiba's contribution to the Make in India initiative? Toshiba is closely aligned with the Indian government's flagship program, Make in India. 
India's geography, availability of skilled labor, engineering aptitude, and a large domestic market make India a perfect base for export activities. To take the India-Japan synergy to the next level, we are now actively seeking to collaborate with companies in India to do business globally. We believe that combining Indian partners' engineering skills and business influence with Toshiba's technologies and expertise, we can provide high-quality solutions to customers around the world. So corporates like Toshiba are doing their bit in contributing towards this initiative. But uh, to look at Make in India at large, let me go to uh, Dr. Rajat Kathuria. How has Make in India created jobs and helped India raise quality standards to meet global demand? Make in India has to be seen in the context of the national manufacturing policy that we had in 2008. And then Make in India happened in 2014. And today we have created uh, an extended version of Make in India, which is called the Atmanirbhar Bharat or Self-Sufficient Bharat. And the common lens is that let's produce in India, not only for the Indian market, but for the global market and use our abundant resource, which is labor uh, and which is the inexpensive or the cheap resource so that we can attract industries that are relocating from other countries that have become more expensive, attract them to India, and use India not only as an export base to serve the global market, but use India as a destination to become competitive. It is very important for our industries to become competitive because without competition, you're not going to be able to serve the global market. And at the back of all this is the need to create jobs for the large number of young people that are going to come into the labor force over the next 10 years. So we need to do a lot more, but the direction is right. And with this, I would like to thank all our guests for their time and valuable insights on the show today. To conclude today's show, I would like to use the Native American proverb that says that we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. The time is now for individuals, corporates and the government to work together and take bold collective action to reverse the climate crisis and forge together towards a sustainable future, making sure we leave a better world for our children. With that, we come to an end of this very special show, Toshiba for a New Day, in association with Republic TV. Thanks for watching.